Hi, my name is Lexi Dong and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I figured today we'll do a quick get ready with me. I've been kind of in a little bit of a makeup funk the last couple of days and I haven't really felt like putting it on. So I figure um, today I was definitely gonna do it. So I decided to pull out a few things I've been saving that I have not used before. So uh, I have a By Terry um, blush in New Dance that I'd like to test out. A Natasha Denona Anya New Lipstick in Susanna and the Viseart Petite Pro eyeshadow palette. So um, before we get started on those items, um, so far all I have down is skincare. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to keep foundation light today. And um, this is what I've been using a lot. This is the Clay de Peau Radiant Cream to Powder Foundation. And this is shade I-10. So I'm just going to take the Guerlain foundation brush. And this is it. I, it does come with a um, sponge, but I prefer to use a brush. So normally I usually put down the Syrah Perfectionist primer first, but honestly the day is half over already. Um, I just finished showering after cleaning all morning. So the amount of time I'm going to have makeup on my face today is like half over already. So um, not gonna bother with the primer today. All right, I'm just gonna add a little bit more to my cheeks. And along with that, I'm going to use the Clay de Peau Radiant Corrector for Eyes in shade Ivory. This is a quick pen and just going to get a little bit of this on here. And then I actually prefer to use my fingers versus the brush. I feel like the brush, it ends up kind of glopping on a little bit more. I mean, this brush from the applicator. I'm just going to add a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to set everything with the Givenchy Prisma Libra powder. And this is shade 1, Mousseline Pastel. And I am using the Chikahodo F01 brush. So I just decanting a little bit in the lid. And you can see one of the things I like about this powder is the four colors stay kind of separated. This particular color has um, blue, lavender, green, and a white with a pinkish tint. So I'm just gonna take a little bit, I'm gonna take a little bit of the purple on my finger, and I'm gonna dab that under my eyes and use that to set the concealer. And then I'm going to um, use what's left and swirl it together to set the foundation. All right, so I'm just swirling what's left um, with the brush and I'm just gonna take a little bit to set the foundation. So for brows today, I'm going to keep it light also and I'm going to use the Wonder Beauty um, Brow Gel Pencil in Taupe and I'm just going to fill this in a little. And the other end has a spoolie. Okay, so let's move on to the blush. This is the By Terry Terribly Denseless Blush in shade four, Nude Dance. And I've been, um, I purchased a few of these just recently, but I've been having a hard time finding them right now. So I'm not sure if they're changing the blushes or not. But anyway, it comes in this purple velvet pouch and you have a heavy, weighty, metal compact. There is a mirror on the top and a brush. Okay, and this is the shade New Dance. Oh, that looks very pretty. Okay, so I'm going to grab, this is the Sonia G Classic Cheek Brush, and I'm just gonna get a little bit on my brush. Barely topped it. 
I got plenty. It's a really pretty dusty rose color. Let me swatch this for you guys. So here it is on my finger and here it is in my hand. So that, it's really pretty. Um, it's more of a, I mean, it's definitely more pink, but a little bit of a, a dusty rose pinky version. It's not quite as nude as I expect it from, um, you know, the name Nude Dance. So I would say it's more more rosy. And I think it's probably pretty neutral. Um, you know, in some light, when I'm shifting it on my hand, it looks like it's got a little bit of a warm peachy pinky look to it. But then at other times, it looks a little bit more cool tone. So it's pretty close to neutral. But I do like the actual color it provided on my cheeks. And um, yeah, I'm excited to try this again as well. All right, so I'm gonna move you guys in closer and we are going to test out the Viseart Petite Pro One. Okay, so the Petite Pro One comes in, you know, the typical Viseart packaging. You've got the mirror here and then there's a little plastic covering on this. I do recommend keeping these just, you know, to keep it nice and neat when you close it up. Um, and then just so you know, all of these pans here are removable. You can see that it's actually easy to go in here, this little like divot to kind of lift it out. They are magnetic. So if you wanna move them around or create your own palette, you can do that. Actually Muse Beauty Pro does sell a lot of the Viseart singles. So if you were interested in creating your own palette instead of one that's already made, you can do that. However, um, I did price that out when they started doing that and it was cheaper to buy an already formulated palette. So. Okay, so I'm gonna swatch these colors from, um, well, it's left to right if you're looking at the palette straight on. These are all mattes up here and these four down here are all gonna be shimmer shades. Okay, so here are the shades in the palette. This one here is called Vellum and it is basically a more of a whitish ivory. Um, so just a little tint of, you know, cream in there, but it's, it's mostly white. And then we have the shade Tawny, which is a matte brown. And um, then we have the shade Merlot, which from the name I would expect it to look more burgundy-ish, but it really looks more like a brown with a tinge of burgundy um, versus the other way around. This last matte shade here is called Cappuccino and is a nice deep, um, like coffee brown. Moving on to the four shimmer shades, we have Starlight, which is a really pretty champagne color. And then we have Medallion, which is a gold. See that? And then we have Copper, which just like the name, it really does look like copper. And then our last shade here is Scarlet, which is actually more of a rosy pink. All right, so not really sure what I wanna do exactly, <laughs> um, but I think we're gonna get started with this shade Tawny. And I'm just going to take the Raffer 15 brush, get a little bit here on the tip, and start blending this into the crease. All 
All right, moving on to more of the mobile lid, I'm gonna go into the shade Starlight here, and this is the Sonia G Soft Shader, and I'm gonna put this on the inner third. I'm just adding a little bit in the inner corner as well. And then I think I'm gonna play more with this more gold color and the scarlet color. So I'm going to go ahead and the rest of my lid is going to be this medallion shade. And I'm just gonna leave the very outer corner um, open. And you can see this color is actually very buildable. When I add on to it, it definitely gets a little bit deeper and more sparkly. So I'm just wiping my brush on a microfiber cloth. I'm gonna set this down and use this again. Right now I wanna go into the outer corner um, a little bit more precisely. So I'm taking the Sonia G Pencil Pro and you can see it's a pretty large brush, but I'm gonna go into the shade Cappuccino. And I'm just gonna kind of dab this on the outer corner here. Okay, going back in with the Refer 15 that I used originally, I'm going to kind of blend those edges into the crease. I'm just gonna kind of blend this a little bit. I'm gonna wipe off the Pencil Pro I'm gonna go into the Merlot shade right here. I'm just gonna add a little bit more, not on the very outer port part. <laughs> um, so I have cappuccino, then the Merlot. And I'm gonna grab the blending brush and just kind of blend those a little bit. Add a little bit more of this eye. All right, I'm just taking the blending brush with no additional shadow and blending up to the brow here, just with any residue. All right, taking the soft shader again and going into this shade Scarlet here, I'm going to tap this on the portion of the, the second half, the outer half of the lid up to the Merlot. And then I'm just going to tap lightly with the residual over the medallion there. So when I shift my eyes, you can actually see it has a little bit of all of the colors um, and using these shimmer shades, it really, they kind of blend nicely um, into each other with a gradient. So we've got the champagne, then the medallion, or I guess it's starlight and then medallion and then scarlet, and then just a little bit of deepness in the outer corner. So I like that. Um, so I'm just taking the uh, Refer 15 blender brush and just making sure the edges are good. 
Okay, and for eyeliner, I'm going to use the Refer 03 brush. I'm going to go first into the shade Copper here and put this um, in the under lower lashes. So I'm not getting, I'm going right under the lashes, but not um, super, super tight because I'm going to kind of blend this out a little bit and add a little bit of the cappuccino. I don't think I like the way the copper looks right up against my eyes. I feel like it makes it look a little too watery. I need something on the waterline there. Okay, so same brush, I just wiped it off. Going into Cappuccino, the deepest shade. And I'm gonna actually put this kind of right in the lashes, a little bit on the waterline, but I'm not, it's not intentional. <laughs> I very rarely put shadows on my waterline because my eyes water very, very easily. Okay, wiping that brush off and now with no new shadow, I'm just gonna kinda smudge it out a little. All right, same brush. I'm um, going back into Starlight and just gonna add a little bit more to the inner corner here. And for the upper lash, I'm going back into Cappuccino. Okay, so I wasn't really in the mood for like a really um, deep or darker line there, which is why I used it, um, the, I used the eyeshadow dry, but normally if I was looking for a tighter line there, I would dampen the brush first and use that, or I would use a, um, you know, more of a traditional liner brush, like, like something like this. Um, so... Um, now I'm just going back in with the, um, the soft shader and just kind of, I have no additional shadow. I'm just making sure that it's cleaned up along the edges here a little bit. So I just have some extra dimension then essentially along the lash line and you can see it did get a little fallout here and obviously right there. So I'm going to see if I can dust that away. So I'm just gonna go ahead with the powder brush and dust that off. All right, no problem there. And okay, so I added the Lancome Monsieur Big Mascara and now I'm ready to add on a little finishing powder and highlight. So I'm going to use the Coke and Dough. Um, this is the May Fonchi Brightening Moisture Powder. And I'm just using the same brush that I used earlier and just get a little bit on there. And you can see this side of my face versus this side, that like soft sheen that you get there. It really blends in nicely and adds like a, like a satin finish to your skin. So this is the sheen you get with using a really fluffy brush, but if you want it even um, more noticeable, if you use something a little bit denser, something like the Sonia G Face One brush, and you kind of buff that into your skin, um, you know, you get a really beautiful finish that way as well. I actually think the finish of this powder would be fantastic for a powder foundation. Okay, so for highlight today, I'm going to use the Chanel. This is the A Cloud Du Désert. And this is part of the summer 2020 collection. And, you know, honestly, this 
shade um, is deep enough that I can actually use it as more of a highlight blush. So I'm gonna go back in with a classic cheek brush and just add a little bit. Okay, so that's it for the actual face. And now for lips, I wanna try this. Um, I need a nude lipstick from Natasha Denona in shade 32 NP, Susanna. Okay, so if you're not familiar with these, they come in a white, um, more square shape. It's with rounded edges, um, metal case. And it, it, there is uh, magnetism. Uh, for this. So here we go. This is it. And let's see what this looks like. So, you know, it's still more peachy than I guessed from the description online. Okay, so I think I'm probably gonna give up on buying these. I have a few of these shades. I still haven't found my perfect nude from them. Um, the texture is very nice and creamy, so I like that about it. But what I don't like is the smell. It's like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like a, it's a makeup-y smell, you know? It's not like it's scented with like, you know, a perfume or anything like that, but um, the scent of it just, it kind of reminds me of clay and I don't know. It's just, it's not my favorite. So I don't know. I think it's, it's only an okay shade, but I don't really like it. So I think I'm going to actually take this off. Okay. So I think instead I'm going to go ahead with a Chantecai Lip Chic in Amour. This is a really pretty, more rosy shade. Um, it's one of my go-tos. Okay, so yeah, I like that better. I love the texture of these. They're just, you know, so creamy and kind of balmy in a way, not sticky at all, but um, yeah, they just feel really nice. Okay, so that is everything for the look today. And before I go, uh, let me just give take a minute and share my thoughts on these products. So these are first impressions on the shades that I use today, but these are all items that I have in other colors. So I they're not first impressions on formula. Um, so the Viseart eyeshadow palette. So this is the Petite Pro One. Here are the swatches for that. I think they are lovely. Uh, the Viseart mattes always blend super well, which let's face it, we've all had eyeshadow palettes where either they don't all blend nicely or the mattes in particular end up looking very patchy. So that's one of the things about Viseart that I really like. I think they have some of the best mattes on the market and their shimmer shades are great too. So one of the things I like about these in general is that they all blend very seamlessly and with like no effort. Um, the shimmers, you know, I have used them wet before to kind of amp up the color and they work beautifully for that as well. So these particular, this particular palette, I like this particular palette. It's not my favorite. I think it's a little bit warmer than what I expected. And, you know, I really like the shades, but I wish they were slightly more cool tone than they are. I still love it and wear it, and I like the look that I ended up with today. So it's definitely one that I'll still be using, but it's not my favorite Viseart palette or eyeshadow palette in general. Now, moving on to the lipstick, the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Lipsticks. Um, as I mentioned before, I just don't love them. Um, you know, they have a very nice creamy texture on the lips. I love the way they feel on my lips. I'm not huge on the scent of these lipsticks. And again, I'm not sure what the scent is. It's kind of like a 
clay or kaolin, um, you know, makeup-y smell. And, you know, it's not, it's, it's fine. It's just, I just don't really enjoy it. And this particular shade, Susanna, I don't really care for it on me. I'll play around with it and see how I can make it work. I'm sure if I use like a different color lip liner or something underneath, something more pink, that will help this um, lipstick look a little bit better on me and maybe top it with some gloss. So I can still use it, but I think I am done purchasing the I Need a Nude lipsticks because I have a few of them, still haven't found a color that I really like. And it's a shame because I see them on other people and they look amazing, um, but I have not found one that I really enjoy. All right, and then the By Terry blush. I really like these By Terry blushes. So um, I'm not sure what's going on, whether they are changing them in some way. I hope they're not changing the formula, but the ones that are easier to find now are like the half and half inside. And I personally really like having this separate. I can't even think of what the other half is. It's not like two blushes. I think maybe it's blush and contour or something like that, which is fine. You know, I like products like that as well, but I personally, you know, really just, I really like these as they are. So I hope they're not going anywhere, but I really like this shade. The other shade that I have so far is platonic blonde, which I think is the quintessential peach blush. Um, it is absolutely perfect and amazing. This is a really nice neutral uh, rosy shade. And I know I will be using this a lot. During the summer, I tend to go more for um, peachy shades or bright, brighter pinks. So um, this I'll probably use more of later, like closer to fall and so forth than I will during the heat of the summer. But um, yeah, overall, I really like it. Glad I have it. Definitely one that I'm going to love and use a lot. And that was it for the new products. If you guys have any questions on anything that I used today, please let me know down below. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me. Please give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope to see you guys next time. So have a great, safe, and healthy day.